to be with you this morning as we celebrate this feast, remembering the uh, archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. And, you know, uh, we have today our two first reading options. And the first one, I think, focuses uh, more on a familiar story, the encounter of Daniel uh, with this vision of God that includes these angelic beings. Uh, But the second one is particularly interesting as well and probably much uh, less commonly heard in parishes. And so we're going to talk a little bit this morning with this great opportunity uh, about um, the the doctrine about the angels and not to go on too long. And I do appreciate Deacon Mike. I sort of usurped his place here. I'm sorry about that. It was a good opportunity to share specifically about this this teaching. So in the book of Revelation, it's describing something in a a future, I mean, a past tense that that happened in a different time period, okay? So it's talking about the angelic fall, for one thing. And it describes this dragon, right, this dragon kind of figure. And in the ancient Near East, uh, the dragon or a sea monster was a symbol of, of evil and specifically a symbol of unformed chaos before the creation of the world. You know, that was sort of the idea. And that in their, in their more primordial sense of creation that the sea monsters and all those things are sort of tamed by God. And so what it's going back to is the teaching of the angelic fall that is part of what we believe as Catholics. It is revealed doctrine and that uh, at the dawn of creation that uh, angels, some of the angels uh, refuse relationship with, with, with God, ultimately with Christ, that they are supposed to be subservient to Christ and they fall and they lose that state of grace forever. We know that as, as people that we are, are always changing. And for us, we go in and out. Probably most of us in the course of our lives will go in and out of the state of grace and spend some time in it and a lot of time outside it. And for angels, uh, this is like an instant thing and it's permanent. That decision, once they made it, is, is unchanging. And so, you know, what are angels just in general? Well, angels are a very misunderstood teaching of Christianity, a tremendously misunderstood teaching. And part of that is just due to the way our culture has assimilated and responded to uh, Christian ideas. Uh, All the possession movies you see uh, out there that are they make new ones every year, you know, um, are essentially about angels, uh, but again, very much misunderstood. And uh, people often do depict them as kind of like um, a benevolent being or a destructive being. An angel is a spiritual, personal, and immortal creature with intelligence and free will who glorifies God without ceasing and who serves God as a messenger of his saving plan. We see that in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. In other words, an angel is a a pure spirit. Uh, There is no body at all, and they they do live forever. Uh, They have intelligence and will. They are surpassing in perfection all visible creatures. And there is a hierarchy of angels that was proposed by someone named Pseudo-Dionysius the Oropagite uh, a long, long time ago. And he proposed a hierarchy of angels that, uh, that is uh, often thought to exist. And so there are quite a few. And in fact, it would take a long time to really narrate the full set of angels. He envisioned them as three different spheres uh, of different, different types. And uh, it's worth pointing out that based on this, the archangels, if you go with his system, the archangels are the second to lowest, the second to lowest in that, in that uh, group. 
And so archangels have a special role of being uh, announcers of God's glory and what God is doing. We think of, you know, we think of uh, Michael with his war with Satan. We think of Gabriel announcing to Mary the the the, uh, the conception of Jesus, that the incarnation of Jesus. We think of Raphael as healing Tobit in sacred scripture. But what I will just share about this is that the angels have a relationship with with Christ, and ultimately, without Christ, they don't really make as much sense to us, and uh, that is because angel is a, a, a task, a purpose, what they really are, are, are spirits, and angel is what they do, right? An angel is a messenger, essentially, and so the big difference between what we would call the good angels, when that would include the archangels, all these things, and the bad angels that are devils, is that the good angels are in that grace relationship with God, and the bad angels are, you know, not in that grace. And so they are here to to help us as well. And so what I would just encourage you to do as we continue this week is to maybe think about learning more about the angels, because uh, really most Catholics don't know anything at all about angels. And, and, and if you, in many Catholics that do know a little bit about angels, their, their, their view is deeply formed by the um, after, after culture, so to speak, that the, the culture's assimilation of these ideas. And yeah, they can be scary. You know, even the good angels in sacred scripture can be fearsome. They can be very fearsome. Michael, for example, they can, they can be very scary to kind of see. Uh, and the, the bad angels are, are very destructive, right, and very negative. And uh, you don't want those forces in your life. But we just pray today that Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael will continue to intercede for the faithful. If they, will, uh, they will help us to be protected against evil and to continue to draw closer to the kingdom of God.